Yes, dear friends, now we have gone one more step and you have seen for a mass spring damper system of second order in nature, how do I analyze what is the mathematical background or trick or technique required to find out the damping ratio and natural frequency. It is more important to make our understanding very clear that a second order system need not oscillate, it will oscillate or it will come to a return without oscillation that depends upon what is the value of c, right? that is the damping constant. Okay? Or in terms of zeta, if I tell, if the damping ratio is less than 1, it will be oscillated return. If it is zeta greater than 1, it will be over damped case, no oscillation and zeta equal to or damping ratio equal to zeta critical or damping ratio equal to 1, then it will also not have oscillation, it will come back and the return will be fastest. All those things you need to analyze before you apply all this trick, right? do not do it blindly. But preparing ourselves with this sort of a uh, trick and skill, we need to see how to put our first foot forward to analyze an aircraft aircraft dynamics. We will not rush. We will take a simple case. We will take a case where, say this is the wind tunnel. And I have mounted aircraft. This is the elevator. mounted in such a way that I have mounted in such a way about a hinge point such that it has only pitch degree of freedom. It can only do pitching. No motion like this. Right, only pitching, right? No plunging motion, only pitching motion, right? No yawing motion, no lateral motion, only pitching motion is permitted. I want to analyze this. What I do, I give it a small disturbance, I give some elevator input delta E and then release it. So I would I like to study how this oscillation will happen and how its transient will behave. And I would like to use the whatever you have understood for a mass spring damper system, can I use those things directly or not? And when you are using it, what more understanding is required, which will make our life easier to transform the knowledge of a mass spring damper system to an aircraft system. Right? Remember for a mass spring damper system, we are talking about F t and you are talking about motion, linear motion along x direction, this motion. But here the difference is it is an angular motion. Right? So, whatever this forcing function was doing as a member of force, here that force is replaced by the moment. What type of moment? It is the what is this moment called? Moment about y axis, this is pitching, so this is called pitching moment, right? And if you recall this pitching moment will be function of alpha angle of attack. You know what is angle of attack? Angle of attack is the angle between the chord line and the velocity vector, right? Then it will be function of q that is the pitch rate. What pitch rate it is oscillating? Function of alpha dot and I am putting a delta e. We have done all this thing in our last course alpha dot, because you know there is a delay in the downwash. Right? So, whatever time you are analyzing, actually those downwash has not happened, because it takes finite time for the shedding vortices to travel to the tail. So, there is a delay. And on a quasi steady approach, we try to approximate moment through its non dimensional term, this is f alpha for q, you used to write q c by 2 v. Why? 
because we want to keep this all argument in non-dimensional form. You see, alpha is in radian, non-dimensional. Q is in radian per second, so it's a dimension. So we have changed this Q to Q C by two V to make it non-dimensional. Similarly, alpha dot also we will do like that. Which all these things you are familiar, and those who need more clarification may follow my last lecture on aircraft stability. If this is the form, then using a Taylor series and assuming a linear aerodynamics, I can write C m expand C m as C m naught plus C m alpha into alpha plus C m q into q c by 2 v plus C m alpha dot into alpha dot c by 2 v plus C m delta e into delta e. What is C m alpha? This is d C m by d alpha. What is C m q? C m q was d C m by d q c by 2 v. Similarly, C m alpha dot is d C m by d alpha dot c by 2 v. Similarly, C m delta e. These are the partial derivatives. What is the meaning of C m alpha? Is the change in C m per unit change in alpha holding other variable constant. Right? So, this is a partial derivative. Let us take a simplified case where I put C m not equal to 0, then C m will be equal to C m alpha into alpha plus C m q into q c by 2 v plus C m alpha dot into alpha dot c by 2 v plus C m delta e into delta Once I put C m not equal to 0, come back here. If my wing is symmetrical, if my wing is symmetrical, tail is symmetrical, the body is fuselage is symmetrical, everything is symmetrical. So, then naturally alpha equal to 0, there will not be any C m. So, I can always put C m not equal to 0. Now, come back. When we were doing mass spring damper system, our first step was to write the equation of motion. That is how we wrote x double dot equal to this, this, this or x double dot plus c by m x dot plus k by m x equal to f of t by m. That was the equation of motion. But here also you have to write equation of motion, but we understand this is now angular motion. Okay? So, that will be governed by m equal to i y y theta double dot or I write it I y y q dot. Please understand what is theta? Theta is the pitch angle. Theta is the pitch angle. Just to uh, make you more comfortable, suppose this is the airplane and this is the chord line. the velocity vector and this is the horizontal. Then, angle between velocity vector and chord line is actually alpha and how much this chord line is making with horizontal is theta and how much the velocity vector is making with horizontal is gamma. Repeat, angle between chord line and the velocity vector is alpha angle between horizontal and the chord line is theta, that is pitch angle, and angle between velocity vector and horizontal is gamma, right? flight path angle. We are talking about theta pitch angle, that is, if this is the airplane, this is the horizontal, this angle, what is the pitch angle? How much angle it is? Attitude is changing, that is the pitch angle. And the rate with which it is changing, which is theta dot, which is q, and the acceleration is theta double dot or q dot angular acceleration. Right. So, this is typical moment equal to i into alpha angular acceleration. So, I am writing m equal to i y y q dot. I am trying to develop the equation of motion because I know if I want to solve it like spring mass damper system, my first approach should be to write the equation of motion. So, what do I do now? I write i y y q dot equal to moment. Moment will be what? Half 
rho v square s c into c m for c m I write c m alpha into alpha plus c m q into q c by 2 v plus c m alpha dot into alpha dot c by 2 v plus c m delta e into delta e. Correct? This is the moment, moment is nothing but half rho v square x c c m. If you remember, moment how do I write? It is half rho v square s c bar into c m. That is my definition. For c m, I am using this expression. Right? And why I am doing all this thing? I have to write the equation of motion. And the equation of motion here is regarding the angular motion. So, now I can write q dot equal to half rho v square s c bar by i y y. I y y is the moment of inertia about the y axis, right? Into C m alpha into alpha plus C m q into q c by 2 v plus C m alpha dot into alpha dot c by 2 v plus C m delta e into delta e. Now, let me write in a neater form, so that there are no confusion. Do not forget, we are developing equation of motion, angular motion and try to see how best we can use whatever we have understood through mass spring damper system. So, I write q dot equal to at m alpha into alpha plus m q into q plus m alpha dot into alpha dot plus m delta e into delta e. From here, I can write in this form, then what will be m alpha? You could easily see m alpha would be half rho v square s c bar c m alpha by i y y. It is very simple manipulation. Whole of this into c m alpha is m alpha. Whole of this into c m q into c by 2 v will be m q. Like that, you can always find out. I okay? will erase this just for your understanding. I wrote this. Now, you know that in a wind tunnel, in a wind tunnel experiment, When I am drawing it like this, this is the wind tunnel, this is the body or airplane, and the velocity vector remains unchanged. It is governed by the pressure ratio. So, what is happening? In a wind tunnel scenario, when the airplane is not supposed to plunge like this, only do this, in that case, whatever theta is there, that becomes alpha. Right? Similarly, whatever theta dot equal to q it becomes alpha dot. And whatever theta double dot equal to q dot, that becomes alpha double dot. This is clear? In a tunnel, in actual practice, what will happen for an airplane? If there is a disturbance, it will not only do this, but also will change the height, because there is a lift force it's allowed to move. But here, because it is having only one degree of freedom, it will only can do this. So, the velocity vector, the gamma of flight path angle remains constant. So, theta equal to alpha, theta dot equal to q equal to alpha dot and theta double dot equal to q dot equal to alpha double dot. So, I will use it here. So, for q dot, I will write alpha double dot equal to m alpha into alpha plus m q into alpha dot plus m alpha dot into alpha dot plus m delta e into delta e, that becomes my modified equation of motion under a wind tunnel approximation, where it assumes the model can only have one degree of freedom, it can only do like this, no plunging motion. Right. Now, I will do little manipulation, because I want a six, I want a um, mass spring damper type equation of motion. So, I will write it like the alpha dot minus m q plus m alpha dot into alpha dot minus 
m alpha into alpha equal to m delta e into delta e. Okay? So, do you now see? Do you feel delighted? We are, we have conquered our writing skill and we have come exactly same as the second order system. So, this is alpha double dot minus m q plus m alpha dot into alpha dot and then minus m alpha into alpha equal to m delta e into delta e for free response I put this to be 0. The forcing function which is like f of t which is here this is like c and this is like k. So, you see x double dot plus c x dot plus k x equal to f of t. Exactly same form, now the problem is solved. So, now once we have this sort of equation, how do you find what is zeta and what is omega n? So, what you do? You take Laplace transform here, so you get s square alpha of s minus m q plus m alpha dot s alpha of s minus m alpha into alpha of s equal to 0. I have taken Laplace transform on this differential equation. So, I have got a characteristic equation now as we got for a mass spring damper system as s square minus m q plus m alpha dot s minus m alpha equal to 0. This is my characteristic equation. What is our aim? Our aim is to find zeta and omega n. So, we will compare with the standard equation which we have developed already for a second order system and that is typically like this for a free response. So, now I compare what is omega n? Omega n is under root of minus m alpha and what is zeta? I will find like this 2 zeta omega n equal to minus m q plus m alpha dot. Right? So, if I put omega n value here and 2 goes down, so I can find out zeta. So, zeta will be minus m q plus m alpha dot divided by 2 into omega n and omega n I can use this expression. So, how beautifully you see we got the value of natural frequency and the damping ratio using whatever you have learned for a second order mass spring damper system. Apart from the mathematical trick or skill, we also realize one thing that when I write minus m alpha and this is under square root. So, this is this becomes a real number only when m alpha is negative. That means, this analysis is for statically stable airplane. Please understand that is that is why I am telling you, you need to understand the basics very clearly rather than applying it blindly. Also here you understand the zeta primarily depends upon damping derivative m q and for a mass spring damper system zeta primarily depend upon c damping constant c, but here it is the damping constant equivalent is m q correct and naturally c m q means moment because of rate. So, that is the damping characteristics. So, it is all consistent handy and you see we will only be using this understanding when you analyze the dynamic stability of an airplane. Thank you.